if, when you, with the challenge here though, when we talk about Fulani herdsmen, we know that it's not, it's not just so, it's not monolithic, it's not so straightforward. We know that there are, you have the indigenous Fulani of Nigeria, you the, then you have those yeah. who are Move going out. around, nomadic, yes. exactly, you yes. know, uh, nomads moving around West Africa. Now, yeah. how do you differentiate, not only between the two, uh, given our porous borders over decades, immigration failures, customs failures, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when you have these uh, lack, when you have this lack of border security, how do you how do you how do you get to a point where you can not only discern which is which, but then determine which is coming to actually a herd or cattle breed or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, and th those which are those whom are trying to per perpetuate acts of terrorism, maybe linked to mm -hmm. Islamic State of West mm -hmm. Africa, for example. You, you, you see, the ones that come in to kill are not Nigerians. Yes. The Fulanis have formed a group of fighters. If you touch a Fulani man that is in a community within Nigeria, a flash of a uh, 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 finger will bring them into the community and they will kill everybody. But is it that simple though? Is it that simple to say that the indigenous Fulani of Nigeria are, are peaceful people and the ones coming from outside are, are the bad eggs? Because really the, the ones that are coming from outside would make the case that look, we don't have, we don't have the land to be able to uh, take Indeed. care of our cattle. What I'm saying is when you touch the ones uh, that are the indigenous, they are the ones that will call on the group of fighters that have already been formed. They will now call them and they come in and do the killings. It is not our own Fulani that usually do the killings. Now, we've, we've seen the reaction across the country to the federal government's insistence on cattle colonies, for example. We've seen the reaction to the notion of, you know, a, a demarcating cattle routes once again. You know, the Minister of Defense said that, look, we've had cattle routes since independence that have been established. Mm -hmm. The Benue State Governor responds and says that cattle routes don't exist, that they're only in the minds of those who are promoting them. Now, how do you bridge those gaps because if we say that you know the uh, nomadic herdsmen are coming through we're not going to be able to establish ranches for them and we're telling them to go elsewhere what then is the solution if you're a neighboring state like Nasarawa for example how do you think that could be handled you see first of all we should be mindful our leaders should be mindful of their utterances, utterances. sometimes it's escalate, it escalates uh, 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 our problems uh, if you have them, these things bring a lot of money. I think the government should sit from the council, local government and state government should sit and look at it very well. I've seen a recommendation a few weeks ago that says uh, you, you, you provide acres to ranches and ranches that, that, that the government will now start selling to private sectors. Mm -hmm and private sectors will now be paying tax which is called Jangali and, and that's in Hausa uh, which has been paid for mm. and, and you make a lot of money from it. Take for example you pay 1,000 Naira on each cow every year. Mm -hmm. How much would that be with 22 million cows? It, it sounds as if you're suggesting that if, if, uh, if for example all the stakeholders involved could remove ethnicity from this from this discourse yeah. and really look at it as an opportunity yeah. to potentially even develop a local exactly. economy yeah. if it's done properly yes. uh, that people could actually find opportunity where there's a crisis yes. uh, commissioner what are your thoughts on that yeah that is uh, because just like any other business I think there should be some kind of openness in how business is being operated and uh, all these issues before the, what has now aggravated this situation is uh, some people coming into communities with arms, sophisticated arms, dislodging them. Even hundred years ago, they have Fulanese have been living alongside with farmers, and they used to have problems, and because of the the powers they. The stakeholders avail them, were available to the stakeholders. They sit down together and iron out issues. But when a situation at hand is, you now come and destroy my farm, and then you shoot me to death, and you destroy mm -hmm. my community. 
That is where this thing has gone bad. Mm -hmm. These people with the arms, where are they from? Who armed them? How did they, how did they get the arms? So I think that is where we, we should find a solution to this problem. And on the issue of the people who are coming in, yes, there are foreigners who have come in. And, and they are... The, yeah, the, issue, unfor unfortunately the issue is not even business. Mm. The issue now is a kind of people coming to destroy others. Commissioner, I'm sorry, I, I want you to be able to land, but we're going to have to go on break okay. and just, okay. just remain okay. for a moment. Just our join, uh, viewers, please stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We've been discuss discussing the farmer and herdsman clashes with Barrister Anthony Danburam, the Commissioner of Information in Taraba, and an APC member, Mr. Elwan Hassan. And Mr. Hassan, I, I want to ask you, you know, there have been a series of uh, analyses on the situation that's going on right now, and even a political analysis to the effect that if you look at yesterday's visit, uh, to Benue State by the governor of River State, who is now regarded as the national leader of the People's Democratic Party, that uh, this might indicate a, a changing of the guard politically, that you have an APC governor in Benue that may be looking uh, to a different party ahead of the 2019 general elections. Do you think that there is a link between that visit and what is happening in Benue now uh, with uh, the 2019 general elections? You see, you see it's, it's, it's very embarrassing when you see our leaders especially like what the governor of River State did yesterday, politicizing issues like this, issues that, uh, uh, if, issues that one conference can deal with, issues that we have brilliant, mind, brilliant minds that can come up with solutions. He didn't go, for, he didn't go to Benue for solu solutions or to prefer solutions. He went to Benue to give money, 200 million naira, and now do politics. When he came out, what he said was, the governor's forum should talk or call the IG to order. Do you need to do that? That is one. Two, Benue state governor is known to have been lambasted in the past on bad infrastructure and salary payment. Now he's taken this uh, as a credit. He has become a celebrity in the country. Why? Because he's not aligning with the Fulani president. So, so wait, wait. So you're suggesting now that he's he, uh, the Benue State Governor is essentially using this crisis yes. to to develop a support base in his own yes, state. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Tell me what he has done in the last three years apart from this. Uh, co Commissioner, I want to get your chance to respond. You're a PDP member. Is there a realignment taking place in Benue? Definitely not only in Benue, and it is very natural that there has to be some permutation, especially when we when we are coming when we are in an election year or when we are approaching an election year. So any mistake done by the other person who is, either, who is on seat, it has to be taken advantage of by those who are, who are in the opposition. So I don't see anything wrong with what is happening. But I agree with him that we shouldn't politicize issues of security. But what the, the executive governor of River State came to do in Benue, it was a humanitarian visit. He gave out 200 million naira, And I think that should be applauded. In fact, we shouldn't even emphasize on what he said. Let us, let us uh, applaud what he did by giving 200 million naira uh, to the people of Benue so that those who are, those 19,000 people that have been moved away from their, mm -hmm. from, from their communities get stuck up. Well, so I think we should applaud that. This is certainly going to generate a lot of conversation amongst Nigerians who are watching this program. And on that note, we're going to close this edition of Sunrise Daily. We've been standing by with uh, Elwan Hassan, a member of the APC, and Barrister Anthony Danburam, the Commissioner of Information in Taraba State. Thank we thank you so much for coming thank on the program. Brian. Thank you. My name is Ajuri Ingalale, and I thank you so much for watching. Well, yes, indeed. That's a wrap on the show as well. Thank you all. I'm Chamberlain Usa. Um, what do you say now? Uh, was, do we say now, great job to the governor of uh, River State, mm -hmm. Yes, Wike? Great job. Yeah. And Gimba Umar, bye for now.